Good morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock or just after. Thank you for joining us in live studio today. There's lots of lovely faces on. I can see all the lovely regular faces. So thank you for taking the time to come and watch the lovely Carly Duff this morning. She is just waiting in the sideline. As you can see, the room is full. She has arrived. There is stuff everywhere. I'm so excited for her um, to be able to show you the lovely inspiration that she churns out day in and day out day in and night for you can't spit my words out and she's also going to show you some lovely other things and how to incorporate you know all of your consumables your paints and your mixed media products and things like that she's super super excited as am i so i'm going to disappear i'm going to let carly get ready for some inspiration and i will see you over on create and craft tonight at quarter to seven check out this little bit of inspiration from our recent craft academy
morning, friends. How are you doing? Check me out. I'm in the Stamps by Me studio. How exciting. Hope you're doing really well on this beautiful Saturday morning. Now, I can see the comments already. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Tracy. Sheila, amazing. Thank you for joining me this morning. Now, what we are going to do, first off, is I'm going to show you how to emboss with the beautiful Imala stamps. I'm going to be creating a 3D layered image using the beautiful butterfly stamp. Now, if you've not seen the butterfly stamp, this is just the acetate it sits on. It's absolutely stunning. It's a corner flourish detail, and basically you can build it up and use it in so many versatile ways. So, my first port of call is I'm going to load it up on my Eureka. I'm using watercolor based cardstock, really, really simple. Oh, thank you for saying that I'm looting this. So I'm going to use my embossing ink now. Obviously, there are lots on the market. You'll soon find your firm favourite. It's just how it works. So I'm just going to load this up very, very simply. Then I'm going to stamp onto my watercolour card. Now, I'm going to be highlighting using some beautiful um, inks and paints today with this as well. Now, you'll notice when I use the Eureka and I use the Amala stamps, they are huge. So because of that, you don't need to push with your hands. What you need to do is just use your fingertips so that contact with the ink and the stamp goes straight on to that paper. Once I've done that, then I'm going to add my embossing powder. Very, very easy. So I'm just going to pick that up. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Take that away. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen. And then I'm going to grab a pot to put this in before I put my embossing powder. Now I'm using Thirsty Brush. This is a beautiful embossing deep black that I'm using. So when you are using this, if you've never done any watercolour paint, I suggest that this is your first technique. Now the reason why is because when you emboss, it encapsulates the paint and stops it running everywhere. So because of that, you can get much finer detail and if you're not that confident with watercolour in, it's so much easier. So now I'm just going to add my heat tool and simply allow it to emboss. Oh, Trace is telling me that she has been using the new glitter ones this morning. Now that is exciting. Hope you're loving that. Oh, Shirley says that she loves this stamp. It is a beautiful stamp. There is so much you can do with this and of course it's available on the website. So I'm just going to apply a really nice layer of heat over the top just to activate that embossing powder and what this will do is it will build like a wall around the image which will stop your watercolour in from dispersing so we just need to make sure all of that heat embossing is done and you can tell because it almost goes glossy there's something quite therapeutic isn't there about watching um, embossing powder work there we go. So previously to stamping this, I have pre-stamped and cut out the butterfly to create the decoupage layer. Very, very simple. Oh, Jackie's telling me she might have to indulge and buy this stamp. If you've not seen this, it is stunning. Now this actually comes from Amala chapter three. So if you've not seen our range, please pop and have a look. Absolutely beautiful. And it's a gorgeous fusion of myself and Tony Derrick to create this imagery. So now I'm gonna take, now look at these brushes. You've got to have the right tools for the job. If you've not seen the Hemi, Hemi sorry, paint brushes, these are exquisite. Nylon N with beautiful, absolutely gorgeous soft bristles that just work perfectly. So I'm picking up my small pink round brush, then I'm gonna start coloring in. So I'm going straight into this green. Now with the moist Himmy, the beauty of this is that you can take it straight from palette if you want to. If you don't want to, you can add water, but to create that gorgeous, rich, vibrant color, how lush is that? It's almost like a ganache, isn't it? Where it is so vibrant. 
but it's not, it's watercolour, so it's absolutely fabulous. So what I'm doing is just going over, not the whole of the leaf, just the greenage, the foliage areas, just to get some colour down. Very, very simple, and I'm just going to follow the lines, and you can see how it encapsulates that colour very, very easily. Pick up a little bit more green. I tend to colour in sort of layers of colour, as well as you'll notice if you've seen me before, I always tend to do one colour at a time as well. I don't know why, it's just the way I work. So I'm just adding that green, absolutely beautiful. Then I'm going to take the same green and I'm going to take it straight into my palette this time, over here, just in the centre. Now, if you was invested in one of these beautiful um, Himi watercolours, you will know how fabulous they are. So I'm just picking up this off-white as well, adding it in. Rinse my brush, make sure I scrape the excess water, pick up that darker green, and I'm actually just going to add the darker green to one side. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a second. So in this palette now, I've got my lighter green, my darker green one side but in the middle we have that beautiful fusion of the colours together. So I'm going to pick up the darker green and I'm going to go back into that leaf detail and just add the shading, the darker areas. Very simple. If you've never done watercolour in, this is one of the best ones I suggest to try because you instantly feel like an artist and that's what it's all about. That's how whole philosophy of Amala is that we've done the hard work so you get to have the fun and feel like the artist. So I'm going to bring that round now. Again I'm going in the middle now so I'm doing that mid green and I'm just adding the colour on. Now if it does become a little bit wet don't worry just allow it to seep into the card or dry it off with your dryer. The beauty of watercolour means that if you do make a mistake, you can actually lift that colour off as well or paint over it once it's dry. Very, very simple. So I'm just going to come round, making sure, and you'll notice as well, I rotate as I colour. The reason why is because I don't want to lean on my artwork with my wrist because once you do that, it's really upsetting. Now let's have a look at some of these comments. Fabulous attitude, Lynn. Oh, lovely. How nice is that? Painting does help. It is therapy, I swear. Absolutely is. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this yellow now. Now the beauty of this palette means I can use this piece as well. So I'm going to pick up a bit of yellow and just get some of these colours. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange. Place that that side. Now I'm going straight into that deeper orange. Picking that up. I'm popping it there. I'm also going to grab a little tad of that ready orange and place that there. So we are ready now to start colouring in some of this floral detail. I'm going to go straight in first of all with my darkest colour, making sure my brush isn't too wet. If you roll the brush as you pick up the colour, then what happens is it tends to not drip so much. So now I'm just going to go in with the colour. Now, maybe you've heard me before mention with the um, beautiful Amala stamps about the colour ranges. Now, what we've done is see these shading lines that are on here. What these are, are your shade. So that is where you build that colour up and blend out from there. Super easy. I'm going into the mid orange now. Just placing it on the darker areas. You're going to love this stamp. If you've never tried this stamp, if this is your first dip into a mala, this will be perfection for you. You won't believe how beautiful it stamps. And don't forget, we have that wonderful angel policy. As, much, as long as you are creating something, you can make and sell as much as you like. So now I'm picking up that little bit, that mid-yellow, in with the darker orange. Twisting my brush to make sure it's not too wet. And then I'm just going to blend out. Very easy. Can you see that? And you can see as well by using that embossing how it encapsulates. So now I can just add that colour in. 
super super simple don't forget as well if you are doing any watercolor in you will notice that it does actually dry two shades lighter so if you want much higher pigment color then i suggest that you use the ganache which is more suspended color work so i'm going to pick up that little bit of yellow now twist my brush just add that depth super simple isn't it so now i'm going to go back with that yellow now and I'm just going to finish adding the depth onto this beautiful bloom at the bottom here. So let's rotate and have a little look where we are with this. I'm going to go back, do some green. So now them layers have dried, I can very simply go back and blend that out. Back into the green. There, beautiful. Every single one of these imageries is so inspiring. It will just make you think outside the box. And that's what's really important to us all here at Marla. So I'm picking up that deeper orange now. Now remember these are moist, so you can actually use them straight from the palette if you want to. Oh, let's have a look what's going on. Oh, wow, there's some amazing um, questions. Let's have a look. I think they're under the Amala Art. Yes, yes, the semi-moist paint palette. That's what I'm using here. Absolutely gorgeous. Brand new. We launched it on the secret chapter of Amala. So I'm going in with that darker orange now to start filling in this beautiful floral detail. Absolutely stunning. And the darker areas, like I said before, are the ones with the extra lines on. So just build that colour up. A tad of water. Now I'm going to mix them two oranges with that darker orange and that lighter orange here. That middle piece, that's where I mix. Roll your brush to make sure you've not got too much on. Or you can just scrape it across the edge to take that off. And we will build up that beautiful colour. So easy to work with, they really, really are. So now that's pretty much my base colours ready to go. I'm just going to take a tiny tad this is the thing, is when to let go, isn't it? When, when I've done enough. I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit more colour just around there, just to give it, push that out. There we go. So, already I've got my butterfly detail, and like I said before, I've already pre-stamped and cut out just the butterflies. This is how you can make it go so much further. So, with that now, I'm going to colour some of these butterflies, and I'm going to do these slightly different. So, I'm going to pick up... If I turn my palette round, you can see this beautiful fuchsia pink. Go straight into your palette here. Absolutely gorgeous. Rinse your brush, take your mid pink, lay it next to it on your palette. Final pour is sort of the skin pink, if you like. I'm just going to add that, that side, like so. So that'd be my pink tones. So now I'm going to come in with the lilac tiny bit of water and just pick up that darker blue, bluey lilac on that side as well. So this is my colour palette ready to go. So I'm just going to go straight in with my lightest pink, take my brush in there, wipe off the excess and I'm just going to start layering up this colour. Super light in the centre. Now I'm going into that next mid pink. So you can make it as subtle or as vibrant as you like. Let me just pick up some more of that mid pink up. There we go. Beautiful. A little bit of a wish wash. Then we're going to the mid pink. And we're just going to pull that out. So once you get that base colour on, you can start working with it. So now I'm going into that mid-purple, which is almost like a sort of lilac, if you like. Beautiful, mid-lilac. You'll notice as well, I use my Eureka a lot as my platform. One, because it's wipeable. So if you do get paint on it and it's not on the side, absolutely fine. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So now I'm going right into that deeper lilac. I'm just going to pull that colour straight round. And if you think about the direction, 
that the wings are, then you paint accordingly to that. So I'm just bringing this up to the edge. And then I will simply go in our final colour, which is the blue that I'm adding down here. And I'm just pushing it into that purple as well. So you're picking both of them colours up. A little tad of water, not too much. Rotate that brush off. Then paint that colour. Super easy. It's just how you can really get into ombre paintwork. Gorgeous. So now what I'm going to do is take the same brush, give it a little wish wash, hold it in the centre, and I'm going to use that water to push them colours into each other. Very easy. This is how you create that ombre work. So just using that water to push that colour away. Super simple. So that's one layer. The next layer I'm going to do slightly different because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the lilac rather than the pink. Push that out. Now if you take a dry brush, because you've got these moist paints, you can go straight in on them. Absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm going to go into a pink and mix it with that purple and a bit blue. And you can just build that colour. It's so easy, it really is. And that's what's so achievable about Imala, is that you can just create and enjoy. Absolutely. This is what's really brilliant about it. If you've never tried painting before, you've always felt uncomfortable, try painting with Imala. You will become an amazing artist, and that's what it's all about. Myself and Tony have had beautiful emails from people saying, I never thought I could paint. That Amala has given me that confidence to help me do that. So I'm just coming back in with a little bit more blue, just making sure that that edge is lovely and blue. And then I'm going to go back in with my water and just pull it in. Super simple. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to heat set these quickly just to make sure they're dry before we move on to the next phase. So now I'm going to come back to my main image and I'm just going to pick up a slightly bigger brush. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I'll go for the teal. And I'm going to go into the blue again with the lilac, twist my brush on the edge because obviously it's a deeper brush so it will absorb much more water. And I'm just going to use that to highlight them edges. Super easy. Okay, a little bit around there. Lovely. Just going to pick up a tad of orange just seen a tiny little area. There we go, that's the one. Beautiful. So now I'm just going to heat set dry this very, very quickly. And we are going to start inking. Yes, I do love a good old ink. But before we ink it, I'll just place these to a side, is I'm going to do a bit of a wash around it. So I'm going to grab my large round brush now. Here we go. Now what you can do, if it does have too much water in, you can just twist it in your fingers, like so, just get that excess. So inspiring. Thank you, Julie. That is so kind of you, Anne Elizabeth. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So now I'm just going to use that wet brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water, just in areas around the imagery. It can be quite sporadic. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't put pressure on yourself thinking that it has to be exact and gorgeous because you know sometimes happy accidents are the most beautiful accidents that we have isn't it so now I'm just going to add that little bit of yellow and you can see that it's just absorbing straight away onto the wet card gorgeous 
and I'm not pushing it too close to the imagery, just a little bit around the edge. Now, if you use these moist paints straight from, you get really high pigment colour, which is beautiful. But obviously, if you want to water it down, you can. So now I'm just going to heat set that because we're going to use some distressing as well on top. Now, I'm making a card today, but this works perfect as well on canvas art. If you've got stamp board, you could make calendars, home decor. Brilliant. Print on fabric with your Marla stamps as well and use it as an embroidery guide. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to make sure that water is absorbed. It's quite nice to have loads of time rather than being pressurised within the uh, Crate and Craft Studio. Um, with time limits, so it's really nice to be able to show you exactly how you can create this. So I'm just going to grab some of my daubers, which are here, and just a couple of inks. Now, I do have my favourites. You know I have my favourites of my Distress Oxides. I'm going to go for the antique linen, tumbled glass, and a little bit of the bundled sage, which I tend to use on everything because I love it. <laughs> I'm quite honest about these things. So I'm just taking that antique linen with a door button. I mean, you could use a brush as well if you're depending on what you prefer. So now I'm just going to go to that edge and I'm just going to use that antique linen jars to bring some of this colour around. Can you see that? A little bit on the edge here. Now this is where you can start incorporating stencils, this is where you can start incorporating um, different maybe paint effects, different layers, um, if you wanted to add in maybe some chalk paint as well, that would work really, really well. Now you can see I'm adding the colour but I'm not going right up to the edge because leaving that halo of white just makes it pop a lot, lot more. So that is one layer, next I'm going on to my tumbled glass so again just hold it down I mean if you are working on your Eureka just keep using that um, beautiful magnets to keep it into position but just over layering the colors it just works a dream really really does now this is just watercolor paper that I'm using as well so it's not going to pick up the fibers all the way around then I'm going to go into the bundled sage. Now you may be thinking, this is a lot of layering ink, but it works because once we add water on top of that, oh, Jackie said, Carly, you make it look so easily, it takes your hours. It really doesn't, darling. It's so easy. And that's what Amala is about. It's achievable so achievable well now you've got this video so you could craft along with me couldn't you stop me you can have your tea come back and i will be waiting for you to craft along super super easy so that's my distress ink work done now what i'm going to do is one of my favorite techniques ever is i'm going to grab a fan brush very easy and just tap using my dirty water over the edges and you can see already how it's starting to react with those inks it's just beautiful it's so simple to achieve this i'm going to add a tad of heat now and let that water just go where it needs to go Perfection is very easy to create with this type of technique. You see how the layers of colour create the different splodges. And you get like this speckled effect. So I'm just going to dry that off. I'm just going to place that to a side and take my two butterflies. I'm going to pick 
tiny bit of tumble glass. Just grab that and then I'm just going to go around them edges just so it makes the colours separate from the background. I'm not going to be adding the water to this either. I won't really want it quite rich. But people have said to me, oh, I never thought of using distress inks with watercolour but it works it really does and also it helps your blend especially if you're a beginner of watercolour use your distress inks to help your blends be seamless so now i'm going onto my card really really simple i've done a matte layer of so it's white card black around the edge with the yellow card on there absolutely gorgeous and i'm just going to take some foam pads there with Oh, now I've got tape runner, lovely. And I'm just gonna apply this to the back. Because it is dry and ready to go, it can go straight on to your surface. Beautiful, you'll notice as well, when I put any adhesive on the back, I always pick it up by the adhesive. This just stops you putting your fingers all over your work. So it's just a little tip that I find works really well for me. So I'm just popping that down like so. Then I'm going to go onto my beautiful butterflies and I'm just going to sculpt them slightly. So I'm holding them by the adhesive that I've just added on and I'm simply going to layer it up. That simple. So this one I'm just going to cut into the middle to make it slightly more 3D. There we go. And then you're simply going to roll it round using your fingers to manipulate it to create the perfect 3D butterfly. Now on this one, I'm going to add a little tad of a foam pad just to lift it away because I've got that light lift, but I want a bit more drama. Super simple. And I'm just going to add that to the centre like so and then I have my sentiment again matte and layered exactly the same as the background and I'm just going to place it offset at the top I'm going to add a few little gems now these are the stamps by me gems I've got some large glitzy silver ones then I've got the micro ones as well. It's really nice to mix up the different dimensions that you have with your gems and your embellishments. So there we go. All done. How's that? Are you happy with that friends? Oh it's a wow from me. Well done. Thank you Karen. I hope that you are loving that. So this is your first Amala live from the studio. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Crafty Phil, absolutely stunning. Thank you. Thank you so much to all my friends that have joined me this morning. I hope you've really enjoyed it. And you feel inspired to go home and try this for yourself. I hope you've really enjoyed seeing me this morning. It's been so exciting, isn't it? And I look forward to joining you next time with the fabulous brand, Amala. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great day.